everyone, I'm Garden Girl Jen Gallagher. Welcome back to another week of Make It Meaningful. Hopefully you've seen all the videos in this series. If you haven't, be sure to subscribe to the Two Piece YouTube channel because these come out every Friday and I don't want you to miss out on any of them. So this week's topic is going to be affection and we're going to be talking about how you can capture touch in your photos and then convey meaning on your layouts using those same photos. So some of my very favorite photos are when my kids are getting along. And it might be when my daughter steals a kiss on my son's cheek, or I have a photo of them at Disneyland and they're holding hands as they walk off into the sunset to catch a ride. And these are my favorite kinds of photos because without saying a word, I easily capture how they feel about each other. So here's your challenge this week. I want you to either capture on film a active touch. It can be a high five, a handshake, a hug, it can be anything as long as there's some form of touch involved. Now let's try and capture the positive things, but if you're the kind of family that a slug on the shoulder conveys love, go ahead and include those as well. So first capture those photos or look through the photos you already have and find a photo like that. Then we're going to use our embellishments and our stamps and our papers and stickers to create a layout that has meaning and that helps support the photo or photos that you've picked. I'm going to do that by using some of my favorite products to help convey the story I'm here to tell today. So let's go ahead and get started. So here are some examples of photographs that display touch. This is the photo I was talking about of my children at Disneyland. They weren't watching, so I was able to capture from the background the fact that they are holding hands. And I've come to cherish this photo because they are 10 and 16. So this captures their relationship just last year. These are a few from when they're younger. I love that a photo that captures relationships in terms of personality. So the daughter is being serious and the son is being mischievous. This is one of the sweeter photos that I have of the two of them. He is doing her hair. He likes to have little day spas. He calls it J-Spa Day Spa. And he offers services like doing hair. I just love that. That's so adorable. And then both of these photos show the relationship perfectly. She's loving on him and he is barely tolerating it. So these are the kinds of things that I'm talking about. You can also focus in and simply capture the touch itself. But the fun thing is when you zoom out a little bit and make sure you include these as well, that you capture the people involved. So we're going to take one of these photos and we're going to create a layout that displays the relationship we've captured in this touch photo. So a stamping technique that I want to use on my layout is I am going to use a wood grain stamp, and this is older. Basically look for any circular shape or else stamp a background shape and then punch it or cut it in a circle. I'm going to be using a Versamark ink pad and then I'm going to use some gold embossing powder. And to do this technique, you first ink up your stamp generously with the Versamark ink pad and it does stamp a clear or tone on tone image and you could actually stop at this point if you don't have the gold embossing powder or you can do a, another way of doing this. There are a lot of different techniques and ways to do this. I'm going to stamp off the page a little bit. You'll notice I have a black foam base underneath that allows me to stamp firmly. So again, this at this point I could stop. However, I really love the gold trend right now. So we're going to use this embossing powder. There are a lot of different colors. You could do a colored embossing, you could do a clear, you could do a brown. So you could even mix if you wanted to mix. This is where it becomes your own project. So it starts out dry and you have to use a heat embossing tool. So if you're just getting started in embossing, make sure you get a Versamark ink pad, a stamp, the embossing powder and the heat tool. And the heat tool simply dries it and heats it and it'll turn into this nice shimmery gold. I'm gonna do it off camera it is, as it is noisy and then show you the results. So now you can see that it creates this great gold shimmer. So if you haven't yet tried gold embossing powder, be sure to try it. Now we can use this on our layout. So to start the base of the layout, we are going to start with the cardstock that we added, the gold embossed wood grain circle. I'm going to use some doodle bug cardstock, or rather pattern paper, as graph on one side, dot on the other. This is a definition pattern paper, and I chose one that has a little bit of a creamy, distressed background, but you could choose whatever pattern paper you want. Look for a neutral cream or tan. 
then a border strip from Teresa Collins. If you do not have these border strips, you can do two things. You can either buy some gold glittered pattern paper or you can take cardstock and add gold glitter to it. So a couple of options. So we'll start by adhering the cardstock to the layout with some adhesive dot runner. Place it on the lower portion of the layout. And then we'll add the green pattern paper as well. And I'm making sure that I have the same amount of pattern paper on both sides if possible. And then I need to cut and adjust this border strip. And what I will try to do is make sure that each of the little pointed edges if I have a whole one on this side, I want to try and get a whole one on this side. So that is the goal that I'm going for. So I simply trim off what I don't need, double check it, and then we can adhere this to the layout as well by simply sticking it underneath that pattern paper and that cardstock. I love that touch of gold. You're going to see a lot of metallics this year. It's a hot, hot trend. All right, to the pattern paper, I'm going to take some corrugated cardstock, and you can see that I have added a pinked edge to it. This is from Fancy Pants Designs, but there are several companies that make this. This is kind of a hot coral pink. And to the top of that, I'm going to take some pink washi tape, just to kind of tone down the coral just a little bit, because it's not quite the same pink that I'm going to use elsewhere on the left. To the wood grain side, I have taken that photo that I loved of the kids holding hands and I'm using a smaller black and white version so that we can kind of concentrate on their hand holding. And we'll place it in the center here. And then you know that I tend to like well, rather photo corners. And I'm going to be using a lot of stickers from this crepe paper sticker sheet. And how fun is this? They have gold photo corner stickers. So we're just going to adhere these to the photo. If you don't have this sticker sheet set, Teresa Collins does have some photo corners in the two-piece store, or you can create your own. However you'd like to incorporate these is up to you. Just add these to the layout. If you find the adhesive doesn't stick, you can always add a glue dot to it. So one of the things that I wanted to incorporate on the page are some accordion folded circles. And I've done two to show you what they're going to look like, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this technique. One is to use a digital or manual die cut machine to cut a shape. And you can do this again digitally or manually. You can also use a scoreboard. After you have scored it equidistance each say half an inch, quarter inch, however, however tall you want your accordion fold to be, you accordion fold it as you see I've done here. You notice that I have two strips and I prefer working with two strips when making these accordion folded circles. And then I'm going to use a glue gun and I will add glue to the edge of one and attach it to the other. So the first step is to make it long. I use a glue gun because it dries quickly and it holds very, very well. And then we're going to attach the other sides. So enough glue to hold it in place and do work quickly. Make sure you don't burn yourself. So again, we've attached it. The second thing that I do or the next step that I do is to punch a circle and this is going to serve as the foundation. I do this especially if I don't know exactly where on the page I'm going to incorporate these accordion folded circles. Then again moving quickly I press the shape down and then I pick it up holding parts of it and place it on top of that circle and then I hold it long enough that it dries. Now I want to reinforce the top a little bit. This helps it maintain its shape. So I'm going to use one of my circle punches here to hold it in place and move it out of the way. So to stabilize it even further, I'm going to take two additional circle punches that I've previously punched and I'm going to layer a large yellow and then I will layer a green and I want to add a brad to the center. You could just do this step with circle punches or you could use enamel dots 
or gems that you have on hand. This particular little brad is from an Echo Park paper collection and I just want to center in the middle there and then close it onto the back. So now to stabilize that accordion folded circle a little more, again I'll add some glue to the top only to the area on which I'm going to add that punched circle. Be generous and then place it right in the middle there. Again, don't burn yourself and hold it long enough that it dries. So there you see the accordion folded circles that we're going to use on this layout. Now we have the large pinwheels that we've made, or rather the accordion circles, and you can play with the shapes a little bit until you get placement how you want. You'll notice that I'm not bringing pattern paper up into the top yet, and I have plans for that, but I am going to simply start with these accordion folded circles. And I'm using glue dots to adhere them. You could also use a, the glue gun again if you prefer, but glue dots will hold these. You can also make these accordion folded circles with cardstock if you prefer. So a couple of different options. Once you get them where you want, press them down. Now for the title, I'm going to use some stickers from the crepe paper sticker sheet that I showed you. And you could remove the centers of the stickers, but I really, really like the way they look. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave them as is. I've been playing with them a little bit so they're not quite as tacky as they originally were. So we're going to add some more glue dots to them. So now you can see the placement, nice gold shimmer. Again, you could use the stickers in two different ways because if you remove the centers, you could use both the negative and the positive shapes. From the same sticker sheet, I have two chipboard butterfly buttons, or rather chipboard stickers. We'll go ahead and add these to the layout as well. Bring some of that pink over onto this side of the layout. I want a little more yellow at the bottom. So this particular washi tape is from My Mind's Eye, or rather We Are Memory Keepers. But you can use any kind that you have. Again, I'm kind of tucking it behind, but bringing some of the same colors from these accordion folded circles throughout different parts of the layout. So I wanted to bring in a couple of tags and I want to show you some things that I do. First I'm going to take this tag from American Crafts and I don't need the whole thing and since I've already adhered things to the page I want to make sure that it slides where I want it to go. You'll notice that it's really really subtle and you almost can't see the tag. That's exactly the look that I'm going for. Again if you don't have this tag simply create one using a digital die cut machine or cut your own. Now this is a tag from Fancy Pants Designs and it had a navy blue circle enforcer up at the top that I didn't like. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take another tag from the same set. I'm going to place it on top of the bottom and then I'm going to cut off the corners so they match so that I'm going to turn the tag onto the other side. Then I'm going to not even worry about the circle enforcer. I'm simply going to cut a hole in the top and then I'm going to add some crochet twine. You could use baker's twine. You can use a ribbon at this point. But I'm going to go ahead and use some crochet twine. Create a loop. Thread the loop. I usually thread it through the back. You can thread it through the front. And then you're going to pull those two ends through. Now you'll see that I've created my own tag. So I am not limited by the tag that was provided in the Fancy Pants collection. I'm going to use it so that it matches my layout. So we'll overlap the two and then we can trim the twine for both of the tags. So you can alter pieces so that they match your particular layout however you'd like. So for the journaling, I printed it out on some yellow cardstock and you can see that I've torn the right side. I'm going to remove the washi tape because this is where I want it to go on the layout. Sometimes I change my mind once I get designing. 
and we'll adhere that onto the left side so you can see that it talks about a little bit about their relationship. I'm going to machine stitch this in place with some yellow sewing thread on the left side. So you can see that I just added two lines of stitching with yellow thread. Gives it a little bit of texture. I also left the threads a little longer. To the right side, I'm going to add some tan photo corners. They are from Canson. We'll just tuck them right underneath here. That brings some of that craft cardstock from this side over to this side. So here's a layout in which I incorporated a photo that displays touch. And it's meaningful because I captured that one moment, that frozen moment of them having affection for one another. So following is a bonus project in which you can display photos that show touch or affection. Be sure to join the challenge at twopeasinabucket.com and you can find the link to the supply list in a line below the video. Thank you for joining me for today's Make It Meaningful.